Live. We're live. Okay, thank you so much for bearing with us. I think there was, well, Seth pushed that one red button, and obviously that's what happened. Okay, I'm Kendra Havens. I'm here with Sebastian Ross. Sebastian Ross. Okay, and we're here to talk about building modular multi tenant ASP.NET Core apps with the Orchard Core framework. The title sounds complicated. But it's actually going to be super understandable. I hope so. For me, it is. Yeah. The goal is to make it understandable. Yeah. Okay. I'll ask questions, and we'll we'll see how we do. So um, I think you have some slides. Do we want to jump in already? Switch. I have the best slides. Actually, why don't you introduce yourself first? What do you work on? Uh, so I work at Microsoft on the ASP.NET team, and mostly on performance and Orchard Core, but just a little, just a little, from some benchmarking and just a little bit of Orchard Core. So I know what I will be talking about. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's He's just. He's an expert. Oh, no, Trico, that's it. Yeah. Okay. And okay. throughput also, RPS. I, I know RPS. All right. We'll see. Switch over to your My computer. slides. I oh, promised I pressed well, the right button. Wait, wait, maybe I need to, re to reconnect my now screen. Now that they restarted. <laughs> yeah. Happens. Wait, so here's wait. the weird thing. Okay, no slides. It's yeah. just Instead of the talking. Pressing, uh, did you see how the icon went smaller? Nope. Really weird. But if I if I turn my screen, <laughs> just hold your screen up to the camera. And we hold um, it. So the HDMI button is right here. Happens. Any ideas, Master Fritz? I pressed it hard, and it didn't. Every problem this is as a solution. About live streams, we can't cut to commercial. Oh. Oh, it works. Oh. It oh, works. Okay. okay. So try Thank to switch friend. back. Just, right. in, just for testing, maybe. Okay. Okay. Something oh. happened. Okay, so let's start then. Um, yeah. So the title is Building Modular Multi-Tenant ASP.NET Core Applications with Orchard Core. So the first question is about modular applications and why you would build modular applications. So most of the time, um, modular applications is to work in isolation. Like each project, project is isolated from every, everything else. And you might do that because you work uh, with multiple teams, and each team wants to own a different section of the application. So we'll have to split the work and each project with each team in your environment. Or it might be because you want to reuse some of the parts of your application, these modules. Uh, for instance, let's say they, these parts, these modules, contain static assets like scripts, images, or middleware like authentication, and UI, like user management or dashboard UI. And these pieces of your application, you want to reuse them across applications. You will want modules. And last thing, imagine that these modules, these parts of your application, you want actually to develop them as a community and publish your components on a public feed, like NuGet, the NuGet gallery or any other gallery. And with modules, you can do that and create um, reusable parts, public parts, that will help you make some more global ecosystems of application components, let's say, um, like a CMS or an e-commerce, that anyone could publish modules for that. That's the goal of making modular applications. Now, how do you do that in ASP.NET Core? Um, Orchard Core Framework is a solution to that. So let's see how it works concretely if you want to use Orchard Core Framework to build modular applications. So I will switch to a Visual Studio, and I have a solution ready with um, a web application that is based on the empty template in Visual Studio when you create a new web application. This empty template um, has a startup um, 
class that has a configure method that will just return hello world from the home endpoint in a middleware. Okay? So if I run this app, very simple, it will just output hello world like this. Now, I want to extend this application with a separate module. So here I have a class library that I called e-commerce. This is a simple SDK web class library that I make as a library. You're targeting the Netcore app 3.0 target. And it has a startup like this empty app startup. So a startup class like any SPNet Core app with a configure method that will map a specific endpoint to responding e-commerce the same way. So I want to be able to make that part of my application. So when using Orchard Core framework to do that, we will need to convert this app into a modular app host and this class library to a module. To do that, we will use NuGet packages, which are NuGet.org and um, are made for ASP.NET Core 3.0. So here, I will go manage my NuGet packages and browse for NuGet.org packages. And because this is the host application, I will import the Orchard Core application targets package, which will convert my application to a modular host application. So this is done. And this application, this class library, sorry, I will do the same thing, managing get packages. But this time, instead of the application target, I will use Orchard Core dot module target. So adding a new get package, oh, sorry, not this tab, but the browse tab. This is the package I want, and I will install this package. So now each of the components are ready, but in my startup, I will need to use the services provided by Orchard Core. So I will do services dot add Orchard Core. Oops, why did I break? Because I broke that. Add Orchard Core, and in the middleware, I will use the Orchard Core middleware. So my application is ready to host modules. This class library is a module, and my services are configured to accept modules. If I run this app again, you will see that it should not work. So if I try to access the e-commerce and point, it doesn't work because I need to tell my application to use this module. And to do that, we just add a reference to this project. And with that, the services will find this package as a module and plug all the startup from these modules into my host application. And so by doing e-commerce, I have my endpoint working in my host application. So now you see how we can create a modular host application and a module. Now the goal of modules is to be reusable. It's one of the goals. So let's see if I can create another app and reuse this module. So to do that, I will create a um, new project that will be a core web application. And I will base it this time with a more complex example on a web application. The web application in ASP.NET will, will configure Razor pages um, from the ASP.NET MVC uh, framework. So I will say create. And I have this web application that will make the main application. Just run it to see that it works correctly. And I have a more complex app than my empty app which contains a Razor page, which is defined as a home page. So let's add this module to this app. And the same way we did earlier, I will add the NuGet package 
to the new application. But this one will be an MVC one because it will understand all the MVC concepts to make it modular. And then with that, I can do the same thing as the user app to remove address or pages. But with a twist by saying add MVC to support the services for MVC, which will replace the address or pages. It's included there. And also here, I don't need authorization. I don't need this call. I will do that by just calling use virtual core the same way. So same thing with two lines of code and one package. I made this app a modular host application. And I will reference the module e-commerce that we created earlier and was working in a standard web app. Run the application. Still working, but now I can access the endpoints defined in my module. So the nice thing here is that same module is used from an empty app that doesn't know about MVC or this app that knows about MVC. And um, this is a simple module. But what if I want to create a module that has more things to provide? Uh, in this case, because I'm working with MVC, we want to create a module that will contain some MVC uh, concepts. So let's try to do that. I will add um, an existing project that I have pre-created before, which is we called Web API because it contains some Web API. So this is a web project that is a library and that references the module targets, so it's a module. But like the e-commerce module, it has a startup which is empty, does nothing, though it provides a controller. This is the weather forecast controller from the, um, the default template for, um, I think, the API project template. And this one is a standard MVC controller that is uh, routed to the control name, so this should be weather forecast, and that will return on any get a list of forecast as a get call into JSON results. Okay, so this is a module. So I just need to reference it from my host application, which is the MVC host with Web API, and now this app is made of its own startup and two different other modules, the e-commerce modules and the web API module. And this one provides the weather forecast API. So if I run my app, still working, and I go to weather forecast, I see that it returns the JSON. And the result is coming from my XML module. So that's the first step. We can have web APIs using the routing system, the endpoint routing system from ASP.NET Core MVC from external modules. And you can see that you can extend your applications just by referencing an existing module. So let's go a step further and add more components to this module. So here we just have a web API controller. But what if I want um, view controller or a controller that will return a view? So I will add a new class. Wait, I will copy paste this class. And I will call it home controller and remove all the things here. Generate phone controller, call it home controller and simply have an index method. That will return a view. And this view that I will create
in the home folder to match the controller new item I want a razor view add and here I will just say hello from home okay so I have a home controller and the default route for a controller will be the name of the controller and the action and I won't change the route for now just to show you how it works and I will be there will be two steps to make it work correctly I run the app I don't change anything I just change my module but I don't change the app and here to access this controller I will do web API slash home slash index and you see here hello from home so the first thing you notice is that it's not home slash index uh, like on a standard app it's web api slash home slash index because the default convention for modules controllers and routes is to prefix them with the module name just to prevent collisions from modules but i could very easily add a custom route like my home or even a convention one. But okay, let's try with my home and run it again. And access the same thing. So you see here, you can also redefine from a module how you want to expose it. And I could also have done it from the host app to customize each module's route for the specific application. Now, the next thing you will notice is that this view doesn't use the layout of the host application this is just because we need to say it in every view so in the host application the views which are razor pages here are using a view start that will set the layout to the shared layout in this host application so if i take this code and put it in my view or in a view start under the views folder of the module i will get the same result so by doing that and running the application I get the same layout as the host application, but from a view which is inside a module. And which is nice here is that as a module developer, I can create my view, my views, without having to think about how they will be hosted and what layout the host application will use. So you can imagine that tomorrow I could create a new app with a different layout for a different goal, for instance. And all the modules I've built rendering views will adapt to the layout that they will be hosted in. So it's super flexible. But you could also say, I want my custom layout or take it dynamically for each application. It's up to you. In this case, we can reuse the layout, which is super nice. So we, we can create controllers, but I could also create a razor page and just do add folder pages and then i will take this file and call it about and convert it to a razor page that will be routed to about and this is the about page if i run it again the module is built contains a razor page and the application should expose it okay and the same way here we don't have any view which might be what you want so any layout i could just add a layout section here and uh, we use the layout from the host so that's the second thing we can add in mvc modules and the last thing i will show you is how do i add static content so i will create a folder called dub dub the brute exactly the same way I will build an ASP.NET app and in this folder I will put some kittens can I find kittens? I have kittens so I put a kitten in my dub 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 root and I assume it won't hurt it let's try to run it And 
The same way for controllers, we have a custom route to a custom convention to prevent um, collisions. We will do web API slash kittens.jpg. And then we can also serve static assets. So modules can serve all kinds of things. And that's what is important in, in this kind of modules because then it's really like a micro application, a mini section of your site, of your web app that you can put inside a class library and reuse it. Now, the next step of uh, reusing a module is to publishing it and to share it across different um, services or companies and everywhere you want to, to share it. So to do that, we will use a NuGet package. So ideally, I will right click on the project and say pack, which will create a NuGet package. If I do that, Visual Studio will complain that the project cannot be packaged because packaging has been disabled. So let's add this attribute, this tag to my project. I will add that tag and also define a custom package version because I want to prevent any conflict with previous attempts I did. So I will give it a number and just say pack. And doing that, I have this file that has been created. So let's look at the folder under web API bin debug. I have the file I just packed, which contains my module and all the assets like the controllers, the static files, the, the kitten, the razor pages, the views. And I will copy it inside this folder, which I configured in Visual Studio. Let me show you. I configured this folder here. My NuGet packages is pointing to a local folder where I put my package. So it will be a NuGet package tool. So very interesting if you didn't know this trick to check your packages. And I can browse this source. And here, this is my package. So I will remove the reference from the project itself. OK. And let's run the application just to be sure that I can't access the what the, my home. It's not available anymore because I don't reference the module anymore. But I will install this package and run it again. So I just include my package as a NuGet reference. And if I go to my home, then it's available again. And if I go to web API slash kittens, it's also available. Everything came from the package. I could put this package on NuGet or any other package repository and share it with everyone using the Oracle framework. That's um, it for the modularity. And I think you can now understand how easy it is to make modular apps. Um, not mentioning that you could have apps that are made of tens, hundreds of different modules to build the main app you want. Um, now, let's go back to the slides because I want to talk about multi-tenant applications. So a multi-tenant application is an application that will be deployed once, but will be able to host as many or as much as you can, as many websites with a single deployment. Typically, that's what we call software as a service when you deploy once, but you can provision as many sites for each customer or as many services. So a single application can host multiple isolated websites. A very good example for that is WordPress.com. When you go to WordPress.com, you can create a new blog, a new website. You just type your name, your email, your credit card information, and you get a new site under either a prefix like Sebastian Ross blog or a domain if you pay to own the domain and to register it on WordPress.com. But in terms of hosting, WordPress didn't install a new website somewhere. They just add a new entry in their service to provide you with the same service, but in isolation from the other customers. So that's what is software as a service, and that's what a multi-tenant application is. 
So how do you do that with ASP.NET? Well, you will use Orchard Core also. And that's why we have modularity in Orchard Core to be able to provide software as a service where every tenant can have different sets of modules which are which are deployed with your application. So this is an example uh, I mentioned. A tenant can be accessed through different domains, which we all point to the same servers, but the server, the application, will route based on a domain or based on a prefix of each customer to the set of data and configuration that the tenant represents. Because each tenant is isolated, meaning each tenant has different services, middleware, and options in terms of ASP.NET services, middleware, and options. Each tenant can have different data, like configuration, such as connection string, or different data as in the database, like different set of users, even though it's, it's provided by the same app. And then you can isolate the tenant in terms of security. For instance, each tenant could have its own authentication logic, like let's use integrated authentication or Google authentication and so on. The cookies should not cross the boundaries of the tenant. And also maybe you want a tenant to have different features than the other. Like maybe I want a tenant to have my web API feature or my e-commerce feature or both of them based on what they want to pay for. But I deploy once with all these modules and I can allow or disallow every feature for each tenant. So how do you do that with um, Orchard Core? Well, what you need to do is change this startup here to just say add MVC and then let's enable multi-tenancy by doing with tenants. And now I need to define somewhere what tenants I want to use. And to do that, I have a file ready here. I will take um, that and overwrite the one, oh, not this one. Yes, this is the one. App settings replace. So what's the difference? In this file, I have a new section Orchard Core with three tenants. My default tenant, which is the one that was created before that I was showing you all the time. And I want a tenant for my customer A and tenant for my customer B. And inside this section, what do I say is that this tenant is running because I could also disable every customer or each customer. I could also say, this is the do domain that is mapped to. This is the URL prefix that I want to use. In this case, my slash will be the default tenant. These are the default features I want my tenant to have. So the default site won't have any feature. And I can also add custom settings for each tenant, like connection strings, the color of the layout, things like that. So if I look at my customer A, it has a URL prefix, which will be the base path that I will have in the URL to target this customer A. This is the same as if you use in WordPress.com your own thing. And then here, um, customer B. So if I run that, first I will have to change the layouts, one sec, so that's here. Um, where are my web application? Pages shared, okay. Replace, because I want a layout that works for everyone, every tenant. So I'm at the default tenant, but if I do customer A, I also have a site. Oh, I need to rebuild. It's just the asset it doesn't, it doesn't find. So I can access the customer A or the customer B site. I will build, I think it works. And you can see here the customer B has access to e-commerce and web API, but commerce, um, customer A has only access to e-commerce. So if I run it, if I do customer A, slash e-commerce, it works. Customer B slash e-commerce works also. But if I do weather forecast, which is coming from a different module, customer B has it, but customer A doesn't have it. So I can customize every feature for each tenant. And this is how you do multi-tenancy in Orchard Core. 
this line. Um, and that's the last demo I have. So I encourage you to go and see our website, orchardproject.net, our source code on GitHub. We have also forums and documentations on my Twitter. And if you want to see a real usage of multi-tenancy that looks like Rosepress.com, we made a site that does exactly that. It's a modular application, which is software as a service. You type an email, like my email, you type a site name, and you choose what kind of website you want. And this site will create a tenant inside itself. And I created one just before. So you see it's tryorchard.net, try.orchardproject.net. And if I go um, here, I had, I got a link right before. It generated a URL prefix randomly for you. And now I have the site under the same domain. And there are currently hundreds or thousands of sites tenants under this same deployment. So that's a good um, example of how you can reuse this multi-tenancy to make a software as a service application that will create tenants dynamically without any user interaction. Cool. So you're ready to switch over to questions? I'm ready. All right. So I've got a few uh, polls up here. And I'll go ahead and read them off. So can tenants come from Yes. So the default experience, which is a service, is to load the tenants from a file. But in the example I just showed you, the tenants are stored inside of the, a file also in this case, actually. but dynamically they will be saved outside of the app settings but a custom json document that will, that will store it and we have other providers that can store in azure blob storage or the database that's the idea cool and the next question so uh what happens if you have a module named the same as a controller action um there might be conflicts and so that's why I also explained that if you find conflicts, then you have to solve the conflicts. And from your host application, you can define the routing for the tenants. So actually here in add orchard core or add MVC, there is maybe add orchard core. There is an extension, maybe it's used, I don't remember exactly where, but there is an extension where you can add custom endpoints from your host for different modules just to prevent any collision that could happen. Or try to make your modules be all prefixed by the module name. That's the idea. Cool. So I'm just going to hold the mic like this, um, <laughs> since we only have the one. Um, all right. So I wonder if these modules can be deployed separately from the main application. Nope. Um, you can't with Orchard Core Framework. By design, we didn't want to allow that because it, we tried. It's very complex. The issue being that if modules are dynamically loaded, it might break your site. And also, it doesn't match with the, the, the idea of deploying your, ser your service on different nodes. Because you have, when you install dynamically a, a module, you will have to do that on all the nodes of your cloud. And that's hard to do, because only one server will get the request to install a module. So, our suggestion is to test locally, to build locally, and then to deploy on every node. So we don't do dynamic loading of, mod of modules. All right. Next question. Um, what is the difference between a module and a project? I think some people were a little bit unclear on the terminology. OK. So the module is a logical concept, which is represented by a project. So a project that references the module's target we call it a module. That's that. a module is a project. Okay. Okay. Good to know. And actually, a module can contain multiple features. So you can split inside a module, which will be an assembly or a package. You can split different features. In the in the examples I gave right now, I just created a single feature, default one. I didn't create multiple features per module, just to simplify the example. But you could. Imagine a module that contains different logical uh, sets of controllers, views, that you can enable and disable independently. All right. And I, th I think we'll have one last question before we switch over to uh, our next speaker. Um, is security handled from the orchestrator module, or is it independent for each module? 
it's from the host application per tenant. So each tenant will define its own security, like its own authentication, its own authorization, and you can have different ones. So you could have it at the host level because it could be a middleware that acts before the Oracle middleware, because at that point, there will be a fork that will um, map every tenant to its own set of middleware. So every tenant can have their own set of middleware for security. Or you can have the middleware defined before Orchard so that you have a single middleware pipeline to define the security. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Sebastian. Um, next up, we have Robert uh, talking about Cryptography 101 with .NET Core. So let's go ahead and call him on Skype. Thank you so much for joining. Let's see if I can switch over to the, 